very good morning class in the previous video we have done contact forces and we have seen some examples of contact forces contact forces are those in which a physical contact is necessary to apply or to transfer the force to the body in the today video we will cover the next topic that is the non contact forces non contact forces as the name implies in this kind of force we don't have to physically uh, non contact forces as the name implies in this in such kind of forces physical contact is not needed so what will be definition the force the forces experienced experienced by the bodies even if they are not physically touched are called non contact forces right that means physical contact is not required now let's talk about some example of such kind of forces example example number 1 i think we all are aware of this force gravitation force gravitation force is one of the example of non contact force you know that <clears throat> that earth is not in direct uh, direct contact with sun but still due to the grav due to the mutual gravitation of both the sun and earth they are connected together if we talk about the moon moon and earth feels attraction the gravitation attraction that is why the earth moon is connected to the earth similarly us we all are connected to the earth because of uh, the gravitation attraction between the earth and us now if if someone says sir we are touching the ground uh, of the earth right we are touching the ground but if you throw a ball in air then when the ball is in air it is not in directly contact with the ground it is not directly touched with the ground still it experiences a gravitation force and that's why it returns to the ground right so that's why i said it is it is not necessary that we have to apply to we have to trans to transfer the force we have to uh, physically touch the body these forces if we talk about the gravitational force the formula of gravitation force suppose we have two bodies let's say this is these are two bodies having mass m1 and m2 and they are separated by distance r and the r is basically the distance between their centers the force between them will be g m1 m2 upon r square that means this force the gravitation force is the product of their masses and it is inversely proportional to the distance of square square distance between them one more important thing that this force always act in the line joining the uh, center of the masses right so you can see here the the force will be here like this it will not go like this or like this no it will only act 
uh, along the line joining the centers of the body. So that's your gravitation force. Now let's take another example, electrostatic force. So second example as I said, electrostatic force. I think we we all have done one experiment. Take some pieces of paper and a scale, then rub the scale on your head. Then when the scale, when you uh, the, the scale comes near to the pieces of paper, pieces of paper are attracted by the scale. Even if scale is not directly touching those pieces of paper. That means there is there is some invisible force between the scale and the piece of paper, which acts on the piece of paper uh, uh, even from from some distance. So electrical force or electrostatic force is also one of the example of non-contact force. To apply this force, we don't have to uh, directly touch the body. Like in gravitation force, gravitation force is due to the masses of body and the electrostatic force is due to the charges of body so we if we have two charges let's say this is charge q1 and this is charge q2 and they are separated by distance r in gravitation we have masses in this we have charges so again they will experience a force that can be attractive or repulsive see gravitation is always attractive in nature but this electrostatic force can be attractive as well as repulsive it depends upon the nature of charges we know that if we have two charges of similar nature like positive positive or negative negative then they repel each other but if we have two opposite charges right like positive and negative then they attract each other but the magnitude of force the value of force does not depend upon their uh, the nature of charges it will depend upon what constant k q1 q2 upon r square you can see it's quite similar to the formula gravitation right there was g here we have k we have the value of k some we, we are not discussing here and these are two charges and the distance between them again the act the direction of force is again along the line joining the two charges like this okay so that's your electrostatic force let's talk about one more example third example magnetic force magnetic force again if you ever played with magnet you see that two magnets always attract or repel each other even if, if they are not touching each other force Attractive force can be experienced by iron with the help of the magnet even if there is no contact between the iron piece and the magnet. Okay, suppose we have two magnets. This is north pole, south pole and another magnet again we have suppose north pole and south pole. So the unlike pole of magnets always attract each other so there will be force which try to close to try to keep close these two poles of magnet but if we reverse one magnet now we can see that these two are alike poles so they will repel each other with some force again you can see here there is no contact 
So this is one of the example of the non-contact force, magnetic forces. So we are uh, uh, after completing this part, we have completed the first part of this chapter. Now let's move to the next part of chapter. In this part, we'll talk about the Newton's laws of motion, which is very, very important. We can say that, as I told you, that the laws of motion, without laws of motion, we can't study the mechanics. So the laws of motion is very, very important part of the mechanics. So let's start with the laws of motion. So this section, B section, the name of B section is Newton's first law of motion. and and inertia <coughs> as i told you what is force force is basically nothing but push or pull now a fact of force in the ancient time there is a misconception of force we know that from the modern uh, definition that force is needed to change the state of rest or motion. If body is at rest, then we have to apply some external force so that body can change its state of rest. Similarly, if body is moving, then again we have to apply some external force to, to stop that body. But in the past, when these force are not around us, Newton doesn't give this uh, law of. People think that that's the, the, the first part is correct, that force is needed to start the motion. Like suppose we have a ball which is stationary. Right, it is, uh, it is stationary then in order to change the state of rest, we have to apply some external force on it and then it, it will start moving. But also people think that in order to keep the body moving, we have to apply continuously force on it. So if we remove the force from the body, body will get stopped. In order to explain this, People gave them there some examples like uh, when you stop paddling the cycle after some time cycle gets stopped. If a horse cart horse is how horse pulling the cart and if it uh, if the horse stop then cart will also stop. If you throw the ball if you take the same example if you push the ball then after some time ball will get stopped. So they think that to keep the body moving, force must have applied con continuously to that body. But there's a famous scientist known as Galileo. You remember the, uh, him by, uh, you know, he made the very first telescope. And I think he's the first person who make a chart where uh, we are in the universe, we are uh, in the solar system, sorry, uh, from where the sun, where, where the position of sun, where the position of the other planet also, right, with the help of his uh, telescope. He, in fact, he's the person who gave a theory known as heliocentric theory, which, uh, which states that the, the sun is at the center of the uh, solar system. But on that time, people think that sun is not at the center rather than earth is the center of solar system and all other planet, including with the sun, revolves around us. So when uh, the Galileo gives his theory that sun is the center of the solar system, not the earth, 
then government locked him in his house we are talking about the force people think that the force is needed uh, continuous force is needed to keep the body moving but galileo thinks that this something is wrong galileo have some different thoughts about the force he said yet yeah, that's it that is right if you need to uh, if we want to start any body then some amount of force has to apply on it but he also said that to continue the motion of the body force is not needed force is needed only to start the motion or to stop the motion but to continue the motion force is not needed he done some experiment uh, he take a ball and uh, slide uh, and like apply the force on it he hit the, he saw that for this ball let's say after some time covering some distance let's say covering distance s1 it gets stopped but if the floor is smooth then this ball cover some more distance let's say s2 and again if we smoothen the uh, smoothen the floor more then it might cover some more distance s3 so he said the ball or the object stops after sub covering distance because of the friction which opposes the uh, which opposes the motion of the body so when we stop our paddling the cycle cycle stops because friction is acting between the road and the wheels of cycle if the friction between this ball and the floor suppose uh, we have completely uh, finished completely vanished the friction then this ball will move till infinity and no force will need it so he give an idea that force is only needed to stop the body or to start the motion the body but it is not needed to continuous continuous motion of the body when it is moving with constant velocity this statement is known as law of inertia because it is defining a very important property of a body known as inertia we'll talk about this later so this was the thought given by the galileo which after it uh, known as the laws of inertia and this is the basis of the newton's first law of motion so what are the two conclusive point conclusive point of this uh, this theory first that force is only needed to stop the body or to start the body to start the motion of the body second force is not needed to keep the body moving right so these are the two important point of this theory newton put these observation into the law of motion so from this theory from this observation from the observation of galileo newton put this observation in in terms of law for newton's first law of motion so what is the newton first law of motion it state that body will remain in the state of rest or in the state of motion until unless an external force is applied to change the state of rest or the state of motion so you can see that this is nothing but the observation given by the galileo newton just put it, put this observation into the into the form of a uh, law right so that's your first law of motion newton's first law of motion very important and this law is also known, known as law of inertia so if we talk about the qualitative discussion of this statement the statement can be divided into two part first part it defines the inertia and the second part it define the mo define the force so we'll talk about this more in the next video till then thank you so much